Welcome back to the channel everyone, another Primal Pursuit mission. This is part two of an epic three day solo adventure, exploring, spearfishing, camping and diving, catch and cook around some epic remote coastline in New Zealand. I'm encountering clean blue water, epic schools of fish, different species, amazing conditions, hunting for my dinner each day, catching fresh seafood, cooking it up on the beach, on the boat, and just living my best life. Stay tuned for part two of this epic adventure. sitting here worrying about the boat all night. Forgot to take note of the tides and it's um yeah it was beached late night before I went to sleep on the on the sand so been trying to do some calculations in my head overnight going around and around in my head. Anyways looks like we've got a about an hour left if the tide's going out. Enough time to have a coffee, have some brekkie and uh it's gonna say get warm but no I have to get that cold wetsuit back on and yeah and we'll get into it. Whew. Can't complain though, this is just magic. Magic. Breakfast, banana, hot chocolate and coffee, mocha, mocha. Sweet. Not bad, not bad. Sweet. Let's hit it. Cheers beach. We're into it. Water's actually feeling quite warm today. Must be getting used to this winter weather. Right. good. Well, my sound has just decided to not turn itself on this morning, which is a bit annoying. Disconnected, reconnected everything, all the basics. I don't know too much about electronics, so um, yeah. Not sure what's happened, but it's not turning on, so leaving avionics on the phone back up, I guess. Oh well, I've survived for many years with the IRB without a sounder and just my phone, so we'll figure it out.
everyone has their favorite times to hunt snapper for me in New Zealand first light in the morning um, snapper come in in the evening at dusk come right up into the shallows and they sleep in the shallows overnight so yes it only makes sense for them to still be around the area in the morning nice and shallow so just snooping swimming along the coast peeping over every ledge every gutter um, I've had my personal most success in the morning everyone's different some people like middle of the day some people prefer the evening but um, early bird gets a worm or some cliche like that let's, uh, let's do it gonna be using my one meter roller gun once again one meter carbon it's just such a nice size heaps of power very light and nimble and if a kingfish swims past easily enough powder smack one of those so yeah got the reel on it and um, we're good to go Slipping overboard into this dark, gloomy, early morning water. I make my way into shallow water where the land meets the sea with a steep, sharp drop off, meeting nice, big, dark gutters, kelp beds, and I soon spot a fish just milling down below in a little patch of reef. I'm hoping it's a snapper. It looks likely. I breathe up on the surface and slowly sink down pulling myself over the reef with my hand creeping behind the kelp bed here to ambush this fish you can see the fish here just in this little hollow I edge closer and I'm just about to extend the gun and the fish darts off it's only a poor eye not a target I'm hoping for a snapper I continue along hugging this coastline and there's a few snapper out in the early morning sun. Just cruising along this kelp bed. And this is a nice fish. I stretch out and take a shot, just skimming past the head, misjudging the fish. It's all good. It's looking promising. There's fish around. Red moki in the distance here. Lots of small other species darting around. It's all good signs. I love hunting the shallows in the morning. And here you can see a reasonable sized snapper. Again, just cruising along the kelp bed. A nice sized fish. It senses me unfortunately and spooks into the distance. A very cunning fish, the snapper in New Zealand. I continue hunting this piece of coastline. Swimming through a nice V here, again nice kelp as cover, pulling myself along slowly, but no sign of snapper. Oh well, no luck on the first swim, can't say I didn't have my chances, had those two snapper, um, playing cat and mouse was the bigger one, missed that first one, it was a terrible shot, but uh, it's all good, Whew, nice to just get in the water, get the lungs going, I've no idea where I'm going to go next because it's all new coast to me so Try another piece, hopefully a bit more shallow, that was a real steep drop off. Um, not really ideal snapper terrain, so yeah, we'll have a hunt around and shoot out for a kingy hunt, midday-ish. Next dive spot. Water looks lovely, clean, clear. I'll swim down the coast here, use that sun on my back. Hopefully I can pick up a snapper. Otherwise we'll shoot, shoot up that way. There's a bit of a peninsula here. That should be a uh, nice bit more current. Anyways, I'm enjoying it. It's lovely.
no luck here either. Nice and clean, nice diving. A few smaller snapper around, but um, yeah, she's quiet, all right. <laughs> Lucky we've got that nice scorpion fish we can have for jaws a bit numb. Um, struggling to talk, quite cold. Um, yeah, luckily we've got scorpion fish we can have for lunch or dinner. Plenty of other species we can shoot. I'm just after a snapper. It's part of the fun, it's the hunt. So I'm going to try one more stretch of coast and then it might be time to head out and uh, see if there's any kingies lurking around. I'm just scouting around, trying to find the likely looking bit of coast. Um, a lot of it around here is real steep, big faces dropping off into the water. So it's a bit hard for, for hunting snapper. I need stuff to cover when I'm hunting snapper, you know? Big broken country under the water is real ideal. Um, also gives the snapper a place to hide and film safe and comfortable also so you just see the terrain above and it just goes you know comes down underwater much the same so we'll just keep scouting around the coastline giving up on the snapper time for a hot drink snack but just chill out for an hour absolutely stunning day just anchored up under these beautiful cliffs here recharge get warm and um we'll figure out a plan Plenty of coast to explore, plenty of fish to shoot, just not snapper. And uh, yeah, see what the day brings. Time to cook up some venison sausies. Oh yeah, wow. Tasty. Man, this pot's a lifesaver, thanks to the lady at the campsite there. Any sausages, snack time. Put a hot sauce. Oh. Mm. Those are awesome. The home kill um, sausage got made a couple of months ago. Dera shot in the the raw down Tomaranui. Tasty as. Check this out. I'll try and grab it with my gun. Buddy. Oh, I sunk it. Selpy things. Hang on, I might get it. Here we go. <laughs> bloody strange things my last mission first one I'd ever seen of these and on this dive all today and yesterday I've just seen heaps and heaps of them they're everywhere I can't remember exactly what um, someone said they were there were so many comments about you know Neptune's dildo and all sort of all sorts of nasty comments as you can see it's a pretty uh, interesting shape thing but um yeah they're bizarre they're quite quite firm reasonably rigid and yeah bizarre bizarre things don't know what they're up to but there's heaps of them floating around everywhere all on the bottom anyways go back where you came from Just had a mean snooze. I was out cold snoring. Beautiful little nap in the sun. I think I'm recharged. Can't be bothered getting back in the water hunting for snapper, even though this coast actually looks pretty good. Um, giving up on them. I'm gonna go try and get a a kingfish or a trevally. Otherwise, yeah, there's no big uh, big drama. We've got a fish for dinner. Be nice to take something home for tomorrow though. The water's actually really, really clean around here. Alright, let's give this a go. Alright, so I've got this reef here. The current should be pushing, should be, so I'm gonna connect the spear gun to the boat. Um, and we'll do some drift dives. Good way to do it when you're by yourself on, on a small boat. Just 
cut the gun to the front of the boat and drift through. I think I can see some fish working on the surface up there, so that's always good signs. Finally, I've found a fishy spot. This place is incredible. The whole water column filled with trevally, blue mau mau, and other smaller pelagics like kahawai coming through. This looks very, very promising. A good chance of seeing a nice, fat winter kingfish come through. I spent some time just hanging in this area, hanging around all this bait fish. Surely it's only a matter of time before a nice big kingy shows itself. Awesome scenes, big schools of kahawai and trevally here. And then finally I see this big large yellowtail just come cruising up from the back of the school here. It's a fat fish. I'm nearing the end of my breath, dive down to try and close the gap. And there's bigger kingfish behind it, a huge school of them has to be 10 plus kingies there, easy 25 kilo, maybe pushing 30 kilo fish. I have to come back to the surface, I was out of breath, frantically looking around, looking for the school of fish. Unfortunately they just didn't show up again. Bummer. A few more dives, hoping for them to come back, just no luck. Beautiful little anchorage. We've got a bit of sunlight coming down. Let's get this boat packed up, dry, and uh, set up for the evening. Well, I'm warm. Boat sorted. I'm gonna sleep there tonight. I'll get this tent on after the sun goes down a bit. Just enjoy the sun while I've got it. Now we're gonna make a bit of a makeshift meal. I've got some red onion. Um, a bit of crumb, wasabi, butter, lemon, a bunch of spices, thyme, paprika, coriander, chili, salt of course, um, and a macaroni and cheese. So we'll cook up that scorpion fish, just do a bit real basic, just literally salt and butter. I love the flavour and texture of that fish, so we'll have a bit of an entree, just fry it up, and then the rest we'll probably mix in with that macaroni and cheese and have some sort of scorpion fish macaroni and cheese extravaganza it's going to be spectacular we'll see what we'll see how it turns out sounds all right i'm hungry as so i'm sure it will taste good all right so here's our scorpion fish quite a nice size one as well probably one of the bigger ones i've got um yes they do have poisonous spines um you have to be careful what you touch they're just all over this fish lots of sharp things yeah pretty cool fish 
good camouflage when they're down on the bottom. They're actually like grey, well they disappear their colour obviously at depth. And they turn bright orange red when you get to the surface. And uh, good eating. So we'll whip off probably just one half of the fish, one fillet. It's going to be plenty for dinner. Come in as normal. Behind that fin. And then we've just got all these big sharp spots up here. But there's good meat up in here. So we'll just come up on the angle straight behind those. Try and get as much of that fillet as we can. Down to the stomach. Then just like any other fish. Down that backbone, down the spine. As with all fish, just nick away, skim across those backbones. Man, what lovely flesh. Through the bottom there. We'll just peel that out. Across that rib cage. And there we have it. One scorpion fillet. And it's just real thick and soft and just excellent, excellent eating. Look how thick it is. So that's heaps of fish, plenty for dinner. We'll keep that and that's gonna come home with me. I haven't heard of many people eating the skin on these, so I haven't either, so I'll just um, quickly skin this. Pretty good. A little bit left there. Yeah, get rid of that stomachy stuff. We're just going to do nice chunks, keep it easy, down here, just amazing fish. There we go, some people call it poor man's crayfish here in New Zealand, the scorpion fish, um, obviously must be because of the taste texture all of the above it's similar at times has its similarities so i think crayfish macaroni cheese pasta sounds pretty good so scorpion macaroni cheese pasta will um pass the test i reckon okay first up we'll do a couple of pieces just by themselves might cut those up small off the pasta do a quick fry just have a taste of it and some butter and salt i always like to eat fish as plain and simple as possible, especially more when you get a new species for the first time, just try and understand those flavours, get a get a taste for it, don't just cover it in a thousand herbs and spices and sauces and chuck it in some crazy dish just because it looks good. You can barely taste it and it all ends up tasting the same, you know. People get so fussy deciding which fish to take, even me at times, and then they put it into these extravagant dishes and you could really basically use any of these crappy reef species fish that we pass up day to day, you know, so depends what you're doing with your cooking. If you're gonna chuck them in soups, in some crazy dishes, don't get too fussy. All right, we'll start prepping this for the pasta while that's cooking. Do nice wee chunks and that will just cook away into the pasta. I think we'll add a bit of red onion as well. Just try and get a few flavours going, <laughs> see what we can come up with. Alright. Fresh scorpion fish. Let's have a wee taste. Should be cooked. Oh, perfect. Very firm. 
almost springy flesh. Wow, it actually is very similar to crayfish. Yeah, it's beautiful. Pretty hard to beat fresh fish just cooked in butter and salt. A bit of white death would have been good, but um, we don't have that today. Yum. Mm. Not sure if I want to make a pasta. I think I could just eat all of this. It's stunning. Just pretty soft, eh? We'll stick to the plan. We'll do a pasta, get this cooking, and then we'll just um, whack it all together and Bob's your uncle. Well, my macaroni cheese is coming together, thickening up nice. I think we'll add all the, uh, maybe not all of that onion, maybe not that much. Add all the onion in there, all our scorpion fish. A little bit of thyme, I love thyme. That should do it. And of course, a bit of salt. Looks like a stoner feed, just chuck everything together. <laughs> I'm sure it'll taste good. Some sort of prison slop. <laughs> it actually smells alright. Can't go too wrong. Nice big hot meal after a couple of days uh, diving in cool winter water. It'll be right. I think I need to up my culinary skills. This is a it's a bit sad, but hey, who knows? It might be a, a, a new new winner. So I'll just put a squeeze of lemon juice in just to finish it off this Michelin star meal. And there we have it. I reckon I'm onto something here. And since I'm so prepared this this adventure, I'm just gonna eat out of the pot because I don't have a bowl. All right. <laughs> Let's give this a go. Mm. That lemon juice really brought it together, I think. <laughs> Surprisingly quite nice. That's really good. I didn't have any milk in the macaroni and cheese, it was quite light anyway, so in summary it's just, you know, it's just a fish pasta. It's actually really nice. <laughs> just taste the fish, just. Mm. Without the um, other ingredients, a bit of thyme, onion and, and lemon juice, it would be a bit, a bit interesting, but um, that's, that's tasty. Nothing wrong with it. Goes to show how hungry I am. <laughs> no, I'm not that starving, but that's it's pretty good. Sun's just up there, coming down over the hill. Still got to set up all the tarp, get the bed sorted, and then it's uh, chill time. Chill time for a few hours. Had some awesome stars last night. Just chilling there next to the fire. Just it was amazing. Just laying there, chill, fireside, bit of music. Man, I love it. So we'll see what tonight brings. It's a bit cloudy, but um, yeah, we'll stay dry. Anyways, it's home time tomorrow, so if we get wet, no biggie. We'll just get out of here early morning. Touch base soon.
just chucked the drone up before and that shark was just buzzing around here. Pretty cool. Small little bronzy by the looks of it. All right, bed's all set up. Got the Kimalas mat. Heaps of blankies. And I've wedged the end, the extra jerry cans of the tri bag, so no airflow coming there, all sealed off. Got some little snacks, got my book, and uh, that's it for the evening. Get some more rest, and uh, third and final day tomorrow, so we'll see what tomorrow brings. We'll see what happens, so stick around. Oh, yeah. That's the one. All right, guys, good night. See you in the morning. A double dose of coffee for this. It'll really uh, get my heart rate up and, and stop me diving for longer. Real smart. <laughs> Day three, need some good caffeine. A bit tired. Bit of a rough sleep last night. The wind was just, yeah, howling for hours, rattling that tent around and... Anyways, no sign of wind this morning. Absolutely magic. Plan is to get a snapper today, as was yesterday's plan. So I'm gonna head far along the coast. Again, some new ground, but um, fingers crossed, I find somewhere just a bit more snappery. I might go more closer to a harbour where there's a, or an estuary where there's some more food coming out or something. I'm just not sure what's happening along this whole coastline. There's not much snapper um, action at all so that's the plan and uh, we'll, yeah we'll see what we can pick up a few butterfish or something a few reef species to take home and uh, that'll be the trip but who knows what today brings we could find some awesome stuff so um, I have my coffee here my banana stay tuned we'll move along and we'll rip straight into it
Well, quick recap first dive. Tugged the coastline, real shallow, just crept along with these ledges, sun on my back. Perfect conditions, just mellow as. I mean, look at it, it's just so calm. Saw one nice snapper, probably around 10, 12 pound. And uh, I just flicked the camera on. It was, it, it didn't see me, it was just kind of cruising along. Went back down, it disappeared, so. Don't know what happened there, somehow. Must have sensed me and spooked. Couple of smaller snap around. Set a kinderbirly hoping to bring in something as a backup. And uh, only, only that pigfish on it, so. So yeah, I'm not complaining. We're on the board at least. That's a beautiful piggy, good size. So we've got a fish on the board, but I'm gonna move again and uh, I'm gonna try and get a snapper. I think I'm jinxing myself, I'm trying too hard to get a certain species. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I dive back down, sinking once again into the clean, clear, cooled winter's water. Same trick, same tactic, creeping along the kelp beds, looking for snapper, and here's a nice fish. I stretch out, take the shot, just hitting it a bit too high, aiming for a brain kill shot. Fish rips off, really not ideal. Don't like injuring fish, but it's part of the sport. I move on, scanning this new territory, new terrain, looking for signs of snapper find a beautiful gutter here, nice deep drop off, nice ledge, I make my way to the edge, creeping over very carefully, and sure enough two snapper milling mid water here, not big fish, but legal size, check there's no bigger ones, line up the biggest here, stretch out, and this time I connect in the head, it's a good long shot near the end of my range, and this time securing the snapper. Awesome. Mm -hmm. mm. Finally got a snapper, far out. Not big, but all good, sweet. I continue on, nice fish here, another long shot, again just slightly high and the fish rips off. Not common I lose this many fish so I'm not happy with myself, but like I said it is part of the sport, sometimes you do miss an injured fish unfortunately. Sinking down here I spot another nice big scorpion fish, camouflaged into the reef. I don't feel like shooting another one, the beauty of spearfishing, nice and selective. You can see how placid these fish can be. And this fish swims off to live another day, very cool. Whew, that was the biggest swim I've done in a long time. Whew, this whole massive bay here. Heaps of little snapper around, nothing big. Got this fella. Nice little snapper, can't complain, finally got one, uh, and that'll go in the bag. That one I shot was a quite a bit bigger, um, a fair bit bigger. Ripped off unfortunately, I don't know what happened there, I'll check the footage once I get home. Um, I'm just enjoying it, day three I'm just in the groove, I'm just not feeling cold, it's a stunning condition so yeah, let's push on, see what else we can find. I'm back down for one last dive, one last stretch of coast. Still beautiful terrain everywhere I go. Not overly fishy, but I push on, enjoying the hunt, enjoying the challenge, trying to find these elusive, clever little snapper. And I finally find a nice little area, crush a few kinna, wait for my moment, sinking down over this ledge, down the kelp beds, using the large stalks we have in New Zealand for cover. Wait for my moment, patiently sitting there. 
There's a lot of snapper down here, lots of small fish. I'm just trying to pick out a nice big fish, a legal size fish at least. And I finally spot my target, creep along to the left here, choose my fish, take the shot. Almost getting two for one shot, but landing my target and another snapper to take home. A good end to this awesome trip. Cheers for watching guys, cheers for tuning in, hope you enjoyed the journey, the three days. If you've missed the first episode, be sure to check out the link in the description below for the part one of this epic three day solo adventure. I highly recommend everyone else to get out there and enjoy what we have in this beautiful world. I hope I've inspired a few to get out there, give this awesome sport spearfishing a go great way to calm the mind get some fresh food for yourself and your family and friends keep fit and so much more thanks for watching and as usual i'll see you on the next primal pursuit mission cheers guys